is that Mark Esper um, now is being put forward as acting Secretary of Defense. Jennifer, what are your thoughts on that? Well, Melissa, it's no surprise. It was clear that acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan had hit uh, a bit of a rough patch. There were the reports uh, during the D-Day uh, events that uh, that the president was seeking alternatives, and it was clear that his confirmation had stalled because uh, the actual request for a confirmation hearing and his actual orders had not ever been sent up to the Hill. Uh, then there was just moments ago a USA Today article that uh, broke news that the FBI had, was still investigating uh, allegations of domestic abuse that came out of a very contentious divorce proceedings mm. involving Shanahan. And so I think it's no surprise that the president decided that this was going to be a difficult confirmation hearing. And uh, remember, the inspector general had to look into Shanahan's involvement with uh, Boeing and whether he had used his former position at Boeing once here in the Pentagon. Uh, he was cleared of that by the IG. But this has been a troubled nomination really from the beginning. And it was clear that the president was losing confidence in the nomination. Uh, speaking of, of Mark S. Yeah. He is currently the head of the he's the, currently uh, the Army secretary in charge of 1.4 million soldiers and National Guardsmen. He has been leading that department um, and is a favorite of the president. He is a graduate, as we heard, of the West, of West Point, class of 1986. He served on active duty for a decade. He served in the Gulf War. He led the 101st Airborne and, and a rifle, pl rifle uh, uh, platoon, uh, excuse me, a rifle, rifle company in uh, Europe. So he has uh, a lot of experience. He also was the national security advisor to uh, Senate Majority Leader Bill Frist on the Hill. So he has a lot of Hill experience. He served on the House Armed Services Committee as policy director. He has a, a storied family history. His uncle was a, a very famous journalist uh, with the AP, the Associated Press in Vietnam, George Esper. And so this is a very uh, interesting decision, but I think all eyebrows, uh, or many eyebrows were raised when it was clear that the Secretary of State was heading down to CENTCOM for briefings and the acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan was not. So a lot of questions uh, surrounding that. So now we know the reasons and uh, now they will want to move relatively quickly uh, and uh, with the confirmation hearing for acting so, Defense Secretary Esper. So, so you would say that, you know, they... Previously, some had thought that the reason why Secretary Pompeo was going down there, and we've heard this just in the past hour, was to make it clear that things were being led by the State Department, that it was policy first um, and, and military second, and he wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. Do you still think that that was part of it, or do you think that it was really just about that they were about to announce this change? I think it's a combination of the two. I think it's very clear that the State Department has been in the lead here. Even when you heard Shanahan speak about the Iran uh, crisis in the last two weeks, he immediately spoke of, uh, of Secretary Pompeo's role and him being in the lead and the State Department being in the lead. Uh, so I think that it is a combination, but I think it was very clear from several... Uh, it, it, you note also that acting Secretary Shanahan was not over in Europe for the D-Day celebrations. Typically, a defense secretary would right. have been there for that. I think there were, the writing was on the wall, unfortunately. Jennifer, great reporting. Thank you.